will the religious elephant stand still in fear of the hand of the Alwar Kadian and his shaking, what? Lifting the trunk like a pick, it was coming up, tearing the vines in the way. There is no doubt that the next second is the fate of Alwar Kadian. The accompanying soldiers shouted high as they stood where they were. Vandiyathevan picked up the work that slipped from his hand and fell to the floor and decided to give it one last try. At the same time Alwar Kadian threw the stick from his hand and threw it at the religious elephant. Alwar Kadian was missing for another moment. His turban flew in the air and landed on a tree branch. Before Alwar Kadian could think about what would have happened, a more important incident happened. The elephant that had passed to the left of him suddenly fell forward with folded front legs as if on its knees. A terrible crack was heard that echoed throughout the forest. In the next moment the image of that religious elephant like a mountain disappeared completely. As the elephant tumbled down the abyss, a cloud of dust rose up from the fallen rocks. It took Vandiyathevan some time to think about what had happened. As there was a huge chasm behind all Workadian, he threw his staff and fell backwards. The devout elephant that went towards him put both his forelegs in the ditch. Then I couldn't even try to deal with it. The mass of its massive body has become its enemy and pushed it into the ditch. The same kind of death has happened to the religious elephant and the Alvar Kadian, which is the same as the religious elephant. When God's heart felt this, his body shuddered. There was great pain in his heart. All the initial doubts that God had about that Sri Vaishnava disappeared and during the journey there was a kind of desire for him. Does such a person need time for such a story? There was also the worry that I would have to do the things that I had been taking for granted without his help and guidance. Vandiyadeva stood near the place where the Vaishnava and the elephant fell into the ditch and hid and looked down. At first it was just a sheet of dust and nothing was visible. Little by little, it was seen that trees, vines, and rocks had fallen down on the elephant's path. What, brother? You're just standing around looking funny. Why don't you give me a hand? When he heard the voice, Vandiyathevan was overcome with a sense of dread. He looked towards the place where the voice had come from without staggering. Alwar Kadayan was hanging by the nail root of a tree on a steep rock bank as if he had crossed the path of an elephant. Do you want to listen to Vandiyadeva's praise? Immediately came the funny talk. Ahaho! O oh Vaishnava! After giving moksha to Gayendra alone, have you stayed in the Trisangu heaven? Saying that, he applauded the players. He untied the roll of cloth around his waist and held one end tightly to the two soldiers. After dropping the other end, Alwarkadian left the root of the tree and held the roll of cloth. The Vaishnava was slowly brought up by the three of them and said, Unpadu. After a while, Alwarkadian Nediyaparu lay there as if unconscious, gasping for breath. Others stood around him and comforted him. Sitting up suddenly, he said, Shut up. I've got to go and join the king before dark. Where's my turban? Where's my staff? He asked. Vandiyathevan said, There is no hurry, you will rest for a while. Then we can leave. Then a fox howling was heard. On the other side another fox started his sweet song. A hundred or two hundred jackals played Kosh T. Khanum. From the upland forest to the valley below there was a commotion at many places. Needless to say, leopards hiding in the bushes are the cause of the commotion. Eagles and hawks began to circle above the crater. The death of an elephant is not an ordinary thing. Herbivores and birds from far and wide will come to devour Gayendra's body for a while. We will also become their prey. Leave at once. All were Cadians said. Vandiyathevan did not deny what he had said. The four went as fast as they could through the jungle. At the time of Astamai, they attained Rajapatam. Rajapat was bustling with people coming and going, carriages and vehicles. Vandiyadeva was surprised to see people riding elephants casually. Is this the only animal that has caused so much panic on the forest path? He was surprised to think that. Where is this Rajabat going? Where have we come? Where are we going? He asked. We have reached the Raja path from Anuradhapura to Simagari. There is still a long way to grind Tampala. 
We can go there for the night and join, said Alvar Kadayan. Could we have come safely through Rajapat? Why did we come through the forest? If we had come as far as Rajapat, they would have stopped us at a hundred places and checked us. At Anuradhapuram, they would have stopped us completely. I knew that the person we were looking for had gone towards Simagari. That is why I came at the crossroads. Are we still going to find him, or not? We should not have gone somewhere else. All Workadians said. On both sides of the Raja path were numerous houses, villages, shops, blacksmiths, and carpenters' workshops. Those who lived and worked in them appeared to be mostly Sinhalis. Tamil Nadu war veterans were crossing paths in Rajapathi. But the Sinhalis who lived on both sides were doing their business without any hindrance. Who owns all this territory now? Vandiyathevan asked. The Chola Sanyam has conquered as far as Tambalat. Beyond that is the hill of Simagari and the fort in Mahinda's possession. The people who live in these pages. Mostly Sinhalis. After Boni's Selvar came here, the course of war has changed. Chola soldiers and Mahinda's soldiers fight. That is, when they face each other on the battlefield. Otherwise, the villagers can live in compulsion. It is only a celebration for the Buddhist priests. Our prince has ordered to rebuild all the ruined Buddhist temples in Anuradhapura. Have you heard the story? Buddhist priests. Why not rejoice? When I meet the prince, I don't like what you are doing. I'm going to say that. Who is this prince to do something you don't like? What horn has he got? Said Valavarayan. He has not grown a horn. Brother. That is true. But he has some power. Whoever complains behind him, whatever he complains about, stops at the sight of him. No one has the power to speak against a prince. Such power the power to make a prince do as he pleases is the only one. Only one has. Yes, yes. Who does not know the wondrous power of the valiant Vaishnava of Arcadia? Prince Emma is the one who vanquished such a formidable Madhyana with a stick. You don't quite understand what I said, brother. Where is Pani's silver? Where is this poor Vaishnava? I will defy the religious elephant with clapped hands, I will defy the tiger and the bear and the lion with bare hands. But when I stand face to face before Pani's silver, all my courage goes somewhere. The chest heaves. The throat closes. From the mouth the coming out of a word becomes paranoia. Then who did you say that he has the power to rule? It's a matter known to the world, don't you know? I'm talking about the youngest brat. The word of Kundave Devi is the word of the Vedas for him. Oh! Are you talking about the old brat? I saw you were talking about your sister, the young queen of Pavur. Nandini also has rare powers. But her powers are different. How? What's the difference? If one is about to fall into hell, Kundava Devi will stop him and take him to heaven, that's a kind of power. Do you know what Nandini does? Her power is even higher. She can say that hell is heaven, and believe in it, and jump happily into hell. She will. Vandiyathevan felt sick. How correctly this valiant Vaishnava gauged Nandini's character and her tremendous power of seduction. Can it be true that Nandini is his sister? Vandiyathevan was so engrossed in this thought that he did not hear anything above. They walked for some distance in silence. The sound of hoofs of some horses broke the silence. Fear came from their opposition. After a few minutes four horses came galloping on all fours. In a flash of lightning, the horses, which had brought dust like a whirlwind, overtook our foot travelers. Yet in that short time Vandiyatavan could see the face of one of those on the camels. Aha! Isn't he Parthibendra Varman? Wasn't the prince of Kanji a close friend of Adithar? He doesn't like us that much, does he? Where has he come from and where is he going? Why did he come to Sri Lanka? When did he come? When the horses, which had overtaken the pilgrims, had gone some distance, in a majestic voice, halt. That command was born. The horses stopped, 
then they turned to this side. He who was seen as the leader of them came forward leading his horse. Others followed. The person who came in front, as Vallavarayan thought, was Batrapendra Pallava whom we had seen earlier in Mamalapuram. He looked at Vandiyathevan and asked, What is this father? How did you come here? They said that you disappeared suddenly and magically in Tanjavur. I thought that you would have been killed by the evildoers. He said. Could the scumbags take me down so easily? Am I not of the old ape clan? Yes, yes. You have no equal in surviving somehow with your life. Sir. I will save life when it is necessary to save it. I know how to give life when it is necessary to give it. If I die like that, I will die fighting with the old Pallava clan like them, but will I die by the hands of vile predators? Saying that, Vandiyadeva drew a sword from its sheath. Chaj! Are you asking me to fight with you? That too in this far country. No, brother, no. I have urgent business. What has become of the thing the prince entrusted you with? I have done, sir. I have given the emperor the leaf I was commanded to give him. I have given him the leaf I asked the younger brat to give. Why are you here? For a long time I had a desire to visit Sri Lanka. For that I set out with this Vaishnava. Aha! Uh -huh. I think I've seen this guy somewhere. Yes, Maharaja, you see. I came to Prince Adithar to inquire if he knew anything about my sister. You were also at his side then. Who is that, your sister? Nandini Devi who is now the youngest queen of Palvur. Aha! Uh -huh. To think of all the harm done to the country by that venomous snake, you should be washed in the wash for being her brother. Maharaja! I am vowing that one day I will die by climbing into the wash. If you come and do the screwing with your own hands. Can I carry you in the wash? That would require a hundred men. Let it be, did you hear any news of the prince on your way? Has he come to Anuradhapura, do you know? Asked Parthapendra. What do we know about that, Maharaja? We came by the forest road. A monk was chasing me in the forest. Then look. Enough of your story. Who saw it? One day I will throw you in the wash and fulfill your wish. Saying that, Parthapendra turned his horse. Alwarkadayan was looking closely at all the people with him as he was talking to Parthivendra. After everyone had returned their horses, Alwarkadayan said to Vandiyathevan, Brother! Have you seen the other three men? Do you know any of them before? He asked eagerly. No, I haven't. Vandiyathevan said. Yes, you can't have seen it. I've seen two of them. I saw it at midnight in Tirapurambayam school. Father! What a terrible vow they took! All Workadian's whole body trembled when he said that. What terrible oath did they take? They have vowed to destroy the Chola clan itself from this world. Ouch! I don't know how they got here before us. The bastards! Somehow they got hold of this rogue Pallava, look! After saying that all Workadian became silent, Vandiyathevan remembered something he had known in Kadakare. Did he not hear that on the first day of his arrival at Kadakar, two men hurriedly went to Ceylon, and that Damayan of Pungazali took them in a boat? Will those two be among them? So what could Parthapendra have to do with them? The four of them were approaching the Buddhist holy place called Tambalai. <laughs>